morning, everybody. We're going to do a tomato review today on this tomato here, and it's called the Dwarf Saucy Mary. Don't know much about the tomato plant, but it is a dwarf variety of tomato. It's a very small dwarf tomato. It didn't really get too much bigger than, say, 24 inches, so it stayed really small. But it did put out a pretty good amount of tomatoes, and then it kind of died off pretty quickly. So I'm assuming it's a determinate variety of tomato. This isn't a... Um, you know, an indeterminate variety. So it, it kind of went away pretty quickly. So let's take a look at one of these. And this is very similar to the Michael Pollan tomato, or also known as mint julep tomato. Very similar, but it's not quite the same. These are a lot longer. Mint julep's more like a, um, it's more like a uh, elongated cherry tomato or something like that. It's not necessarily look like this. This is a strange one. It's got like a neck on it, and then it, Gets these stripes on it like the Michael Pollan. So that's it right there. You can see the beautiful stripes on it. It's a very, very gorgeous type of tomato. Uh, I would imagine this thing's probably going to be a little bit on the tangy side. I'm probably not going to rate it that high. I can tell you right now, uh, just by looking at it, it doesn't look like it's going to be very sweet. But hey, I could be wrong, right? I, but I, I've been growing enough tomatoes to know just by the looks of a tomato if it's, um, you know, it's going to be tangy or usually the green tomatoes, any of those kind of tomatoes, usually you get a real tarty type of tomato where the tartiness is much higher. Again, you can see there's more flesh on one side of the tomato than the other. Seeds are on one side. It's not very uncommon, but Eric could have just been cut on a rib, perfectly on a rib, so that's why it looks like that. Here's the other side. All right, let's put this on a scale and get an idea of the weight of this tomato. And turn it on and let it zero out. We'll weigh this one first. Okay, it's zeroed out. Wow, it's one ounce. It's probably, it feels hollow, these tomatoes, but it's one ounce. Uh, let's see here. 0.8 of an ounce, that's not even a full ounce. 0.6, this one should be a little heavier, 0.9, and 0.8, hmm. now that's about what the weight is on that, and uh, let's do a bricks and uh, get an idea what the bricks numbers are, hopefully the bricks is high on this one, because if it's tangy and it's low, then uh, it's not a tomato I'm looking to uh, give a try. Ooh, that is wet, I'll tell you that. That is liquidy wet. Alright, it's a 5.5. .5. That's a good number for a tomato like this. It's, it should be a pretty good experience. At least it's not below 5. If it was below 5, I'd be like, ah, do I really got to taste this? this? <laughs> but no, it's a 5.5, .5, so it's a little above. That's good. And let's give that a go. Got an interesting flavor. Actually tastes pretty good. See, you can't always prejudge the tomato before you do it because oftentimes you'll find that uh, it's just not correct. This is actually a pretty good tomato, to be honest. Okay, we'll start off with the sweetness. Sweetness was about average. Was it nothing spectacular as far as sweetness goes? So I will go about average. You could probably go even a little bit above that average. It wasn't bad, actually. I would say, I, I'd probably go just slightly above. I'm going to say 26 on that sweetness. Now that I'm really examining the aftertaste. Um, yeah, there is a pretty good amount of sweetness in there. It's a milding type of sweetness. It wasn't a sugary candy type of sweetness. It was a very milding type of sweetness. It's, it's a sweetness that's not necessarily like sugar tasting. But it's a sh sweetness that uh, balances out that tangy flavor. Without that sweetness in there, that tangy gets extremely tarty and it can really throw off the flavor a lot. If that sweetness is too low, I can really throw off that tanginess. So now we're going off to, over to the tangy side. Now, as far as the tanginess goes, I'm probably going to put that at about a 28 on the tangy. It was a very nice type of tangy. It was a very interesting tangy flavor. It, it, it had its own like flavor to it. It was a very interesting type of an effect. So that tangy flavor delivered very well. And 
it was just a very nice effect, to be honest with you, um, with, with the tanginess. So, yeah, I would probably say 27, 28. 28 is probably a good number for the tangy part on this review. Now, we get into the tomato flavor. Again, we talk about tomato flavor. We're not talking about how I'm rating the tomato flavor. We're talking about how strong was that tomato flavor in this uh, profile of this tomato. Tomato flavor was pretty prominent in this tomato. I'm going to go with a 7.5 to 8 on the, on the tomato flavor, with 10 being the highest. And the reason why I'm doing that is because that tomato flavor is very prominent from the time you ate it all the way to the time you swallowed it and the aftertaste still lingered around. It was very dominant flavor. It was, it was there the whole time. It was a very nice flavor. It was very pleasant, but it was, it had a unique flavor to it too. It had its own unique kind of tomato flavor, but that's not what we're rating here. We're rating how strong was that flavor. It was in there pretty much the whole time. As far as moisture goes, we're going to go a little above average on that. We're going to go with a six on the moisture. It was definitely pretty moist as far as the uh, the, the uh, moisture went. And six to six and a half is generally that sweet spot where you want to be with moisture. Anything too low or anything too much is usually off-putting or too wet or too dry. Uh, this was right in the right zone. It was in that six, six and a half range with that moisture. Uh, tardiness, there was a slight bit of tardiness. We're going to say below one. It wasn't very much, but there was a little bit of uh, tardiness and or even it may be a possibly a soury type of uh, flavor, but it was very, very low and it was detectable. But it, it was a very nice effect between that and the tanginess. Uh, undertones, there was maybe a very slight undertone to it. It wasn't bad or anything, but there was like a little bit of a, like maybe even a smoky type of a, an undertone to it. Like uh, smoky meaning like... Um, like as if something was grilled on a barbecue grill. It gives it like that smoke kind of a flavor. It had a slight kind of a smokiness to it. That's the best way I could describe it. Uh, but it was very low and it was it was just um, it was just it was short lived basically. Texture was pretty good. I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go with a seven on the texture because the texture was really nice. It didn't really um, didn't it was nice and chewy. It had a chewy effect to it, and it held the water and the moisture very well. And it was just very nice as far as the texture goes. And it was just very delectable type of texture. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, for eating fresh, of course, for making sauce out of it, well, you might want to maybe fool around with that a little bit. But for eating fresh, the texture was perfect. So we're going to go with a, a, seven, a 7 to 7.5 on the texture. Production-wise... Uh, it was an okay producer. Again, it's a determinate variety. So once it puts its tomatoes out, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if your plant dies early, that's it. You're going to get whatever's on that plant and you're done. But it was a pretty good producer. I'll, I'll go for a dwarf variety tomato like this because this plant was a small dwarf. Um, I'll probably go average on a production. It was about average for a small variety. And uh, it gave you a good amount of tomatoes on there. So we'll just, we're going to keep that at, a, at an average. Skins, we're going to go average on that as well. We're going to say 2.5 on the skins. Nothing spectacular to say about it. Chewed up nicely. The skin uh, color and appeal to it was quite interesting. As you can see, it's got yellowish and green striping in it, like the mint julep or Michael Pollan tomato. It's very similar to that in effect, but um, we're rating it based on how tough that skin was. And uh, it was fine. It just it broke up fine, and uh, it was a little on the thick side, but it broke up well with the tomato because the texture was nice and had a nice chewy effect to it. So the skins had time to break up before the flesh disappears. So it chewed up really well with it. And uh, seeds, we're gonna we're gonna kind of go lower on that number of seeds. This isn't a rating based on how seedy or how good the seeds are. Uh, this is just giving you an idea. A ten would be an extremely seedy variety, usually. Uh, Pimpinella folium tomatoes or current tomatoes, I rate really high, like nines and eights, nines and tens, because it's nothing but seeds and skin. Uh, and then regular tomatoes usually average. And then I compare it to that general regular tomato. Uh, I usually compare any tomatoes that come in lower, like you got ox heart tomatoes and uh, those kind of tomatoes, or even seedless varieties. They're mostly all meat with very few seeds in it. So that's why I'm, I give you the seed rating, uh, just based to give you a basic idea on how seedy that variety was. And this variety of, of tomato is going to rank a little on the lower side, which doesn't mean it's bad. It's not going to lower rating because that. it's just to give you an indication of how, se how much seeds are in it. We're going to rank that one at about maybe either three and a half to four on that for a tomato like this. This particular variety of tomato really didn't have many seeds in it it just had like one side of it with seeds most of the other side was flesh 
and it didn't have a whole lot of seasoning, so it's a pretty low variety. I, I actually think even three would probably be the most appropriate number. Three to three and a half would probably be more appropriate. It was very low on seeds, so if you're somebody who's making sauces or something, maybe that's why they named it Saucy, uh, Saucy Mary, because it's so low in seeds, you can just uh, squeeze, you could blanch it, uh, squeeze a few seeds that are in there out, or don't even squeeze them out because there's not a whole lot of seeds in it, and just cook, cook it and make your sauce that way. But yeah, it was a little on the low side for seeds, so if you're somebody who's growing tomatoes specifically for seeds, so you can offer seeds on your website or trade seeds or something like that. Uh, you might want to grow more than one plant with this one if you're trying to get a lot of seed for it because it doesn't produce that many tomatoes as well as the seeds that are in there. Um, you know, it's not going to produce, you know, because it's a small plant, so you're only going to get so many tomatoes off a small plant. But you're, you're, these tomatoes also don't have a lot of seeds in them. So keep that in mind. You're not going to get a whole lot of seeds. So grow four, five, six plants for a variety like this. So how do I rate this tomato from one being the highest and uh, 10 being the lowest? I'm going to rate this tomato at a 2.5. I'm going to give that a pretty good rating. Uh, the only reason why I'm kind of uh, giving it a, a slight, slightly lower rating is because of uh, the production number on there. I didn't quite get it. I'm, I'm saying it was average on the production, but it was a small tomato plant. So had I known that in the beginning, I probably would have grown four or five plants because it's such a small, tiny little tomato plant. And, I, and then I would have, you know, but because of that reason, I didn't get a whole lot of tomatoes off of one or two plants. And so I didn't get a lot of production, but I didn't know it was that small of a plant. So, yeah, you could say that's my fault. But if you don't know that and you only grow one or two plants, well, you could say it's anybody's fault because you just didn't know it was that small of a t tomato variety. You just didn't end up with a lot of tomatoes. So the production wise is kind of, yeah, I didn't know it was a small one. So, yeah, it's my fault. But, yeah, unfortunately... Uh, I still gave it a good rating there, but it's kind of lowered the, this number a little bit, uh, you know, down into the two and a half range. But still, that's still a high rating. Anything three and above is definitely a highly recommended variety of tomato. If you're three and above, you you got to grow that one because that's anything that falls in that range is definitely worth growing. So really, that's it, guys. That's my tomato review on the Dwarf Saucy Mary Tomato. Uh, what I'll do is I'll leave whatever information I got in this tomato in the description as well as the website. I will also leave a link below that it will bring you to the webpage where you can purchase the seeds if you want to give this variety a grow for yourself. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.